नमस्कार एंड अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीवन आई मुक्ता कांडियाल वेलकम यू ऑल इन आर दिस लाइव इंटरैक्टिव सेशन ऑफ सब्जेक्ट सोशल साइंस एंड यू आर वाचिंग द आर दिस प्रोग्राम ऑन पीएमए विद्या चैनल नंबर टेन ऑल्सो द टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न टुडे गेट टू नो अबाउट टुडे इज फिनेंशियल इंक्लूजन इन इंडिया एंड एज ऑलवेज वी आर ज्वाइन बाय वन ऑफ द एक्सपर्ट्स हु विल बी गिविंग अस डिटेल इन्फॉर्मेशन इन साइट्स अबाउट द टॉपिक एंड द एक्सपर्ट वी हैव टुडे इन द स्टूडियो इज प्रोफेसर एम वी श्रीनिवासन सर इज फ्रॉम डी ई एस एस एन सी आर टी न्यू डेली नमस्कार सर बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आपके सत्र में and i would like to inform all our learners all our viewers who are watching this program with us right now if you have any questions any queries that you would like to raise with us you can call us on a number that is 8800440559 you can also write to us at dth.class10 at the rate cit.nic.in so without any further delay let's start today's session and i will directly head to shrinivasan sir and ask sir what about this topic is all about financial inclusion in india uh, so before we get to know about the topic i would like to uh, request you to educate our students our learners that what is the need of learning this topic or about getting to know about this topic thank you mukti and uh, good afternoon my dear uh, participants which includes teachers students parents and all others uh, the term financial inclusion is something which we all come to know in the media and uh, many of you as student you may be going to school but uh, this topic is an important one we have to get familiarized in today's session we are going to we are not going to do understand everything of what is financial inclusion but we need to understand some basics about financial inclusion why because you may be using money you may be receiving scholarships your parents may be doing lot of jobs they may be earning and uh, you need to know how this money came into being how this money is being utilized how it can be used so we need to have some basic understanding about money and from where it comes where it goes for this understanding is also financial inclusion as a concept is necessary secondly um, many of you must be by now having uh, a bank account of your own otherwise i am sure that in the coming years you may be opening a bank account you may be interested in knowing about what is this bank is all about what the banks do and between banks and you also there are many intermediaries for example your parents due to uh, covid 19 many of you are uh, your parents also may be going to the market and uh, buy things use their mobile phone and uh, pay through google pay or any many other um, payment systems how do they pay how the money is getting uh, exchanged from where to where it went it goes so for that also we need to understand the concept of financial inclusion thirdly if you look at uh, india is a, one of the largest democracies in the world and this democratic government has been doing a considerable effort to bring in people into the financial net you also should know what the government is doing in this area of financial inclusion for all these three important purposes let us i thought uh, let us uh, familiarize ourselves with the financial inclusion as a concept look at the screen today i am going to do uh, in a different manner in this screen i am posing 10 questions Uh, a simple question you don't have to um, write down much but you have to read and uh, write as true or false let me read it for you question 1 it is necessary to have collateral to get loans from banks true or false two only those who are aged 18 and above can open bank accounts true or false Three, financial inclusion means providing scholarships to deserving students by the RBI. RBI means Reserve Bank of India. Question number four, financial inclusion index includes details of savings people hold in banks. Five, only banks owned and run by government are expected to promote financial inclusion in India. True or false? Question number six. establishing banks and using bank correspondence is part of the financial inclusion strategy in india question number 7 in recent years 
commercial banks have become dominant source of credit in rural India. True or false? Question number eight. Digital India is the only government scheme to promote financial inclusion in India. True or false? Question number nine. People depending on the money lenders has increased over the years in urban India. True or false? Google Pay and pension and insurance are, insurance are also treated as financial service products. True or false? So just tick to any, you write down answers and after my presentation, you go back to all these 10 questions and you can verify yourself the answers. To what extent you are, you began to understand the concept of financial inclusion. Now let me go to uh, financial inclusion. What is this concept called financial inclusion? Look at the screen. Opening bank accounts. In my view, this is one aspect of financial inclusion. You know, today it's possible with your mobile phone to open a bank account. You won't believe it. During the last mm. seven, eight years, about 40 crore people have opened their bank accounts under a scheme called Jandan Yojana. And uh, with mobile phone, you can open bank account. When I was of your age, as a student of class 10, opening a bank account is not an easy job, was not an easy job. You should know somebody who already has a bank account. You should have a minimum balance in the bank account, otherwise they will not allow you to keep your account. There are many, many um, hurdles for anybody to open a bank account. So when we talk about financial inclusion, this means facilitating to people to open bank accounts. Though the number of bank accounts has increased tremendously, particularly during the last 10 years, it has increased so much that the government was able to mobilize almost 5-6 lakh crores simply by helping people to open bank accounts. There are private banks, there are government banks today. And if you look at the number of bank branches in India, uh, Muktaji, can you tell me just roughly how many bank branches are there in India? Uh, sir, my roughly idea would be around uh, 90,000 or more than that, somewhere ranging that. Yeah, you are correct. Actually, mm. we, are, we are already having about uh, 1 lakh bank branches. Mm. And uh, we also have uh, nearly 2 lakh ATM counters, automated telling machine counters. So having a bank account, establishing banks, these are some of the aspects of financial inclusion. Look at the screen. This is the new idea. See, the banks means you have to have a building, you have to have big offices with computer and all other facilities. We have more than 6 lakh villages in India. And if you go to small towns in like cities like Delhi, Bombay, hundreds of streets are there. It is not possible to establish banks in all the new concurrent of the country. So for this, a new idea came into being in 2005-06 onwards, something called business correspondence. Many individual people, volunteer organizations, and retired people, retired government servants and so on, who have got good uh, name and credibility, they are allowed by the banks to go and function on behalf of the banks. They can, um, as an individual, for, suppose I'm a uh, bank business correspondent, I live in some village, say called Mambati, I can go to Mambati, I can inform people that please open bank account. So he will help people to open bank accounts, he will mobilize deposits, he will collect money from the people and then deposit collect and on behalf of the bank. You will also um, encourage people to apply for loans. And many services provided by the bank, he as an individual can go and facilitate in the villages. So you are seeing what is there in the screen is a scene where one, um, uh, one woman is collecting the details using the machine, something called POIs. 
point up um, spice, <coughs> point up uh, like a swiping machine. So she collects money, she collects the signature, thumb impression, and all the details. So this kind of business correspondence, um, you know, like um, has increased so much. You won't believe it. Today, nearly 20 lakh people all over India are functioning as business correspondents. They go talk to people, uh, open the bank, like they also help them to open bank branches, mobilize savings, their deposits, and also provide all the services, the banking services, the bank is providing. So the, this is a another way of uh, uh, financial inclusion. Look at the third one, Digital India. This is a, a new initiative started in 2015 and uh, by the government of India. And uh, whatever you are seeing today, particularly in the urban areas, people are going to the shops with a mobile phone, purchase these things using Google Pay and so on. People are also buying through online. Uh, people are also buying through telephone. They are <coughs> placing orders from their home, actually. So many uh, happens because of the Digital India Initiative. Under this initiative, people are having um, ATM cards, credit cards, their own wallets, and so on. So Digital India is one of the in initiatives to include, to um, have financial inclusion in India. Look at this screen. All these logos that you are seeing in the screen, they are all part of these digital payment systems. Okay, you can receive, see, gone are the days you used to go to, or your parents used to go to post office and then um, send money to your, like their parents and so on. It takes many days. But today, uh, these payments are happening in seconds, in few seconds. So using the digital payment system, you buy many things, you receive money in few seconds. So all these possible, uh, through the digital payment system. So the digital payment system is also part of the financial inclusion. And then um, insurance. Earlier only one insurance company, Life Insurance Corporation was there and three, four um, government uh, general insurance corporation was there. Insurance means that uh, somebody or some company agreed to compensate if there is any loss for you or your family. For that, you have to pay some minimum amount regularly. And if there is something happens, for example, uh, if I am paying an insurance premium and for a particular year, 10, 15 years, after some time, suppose in between something unexpectedly happens, if I, if I die or um, then the company whom I paid premium will pay a, a lump sum amount for my family. So similarly, if you are having a big valuable product, say a computer, a house or something like that, if it happens to you, you can also, uh, to that machine or a bus or a car, and if it, if it meets with the accident, if it needs to be repaired, you can also, um, uh, if you are insuring your car, and if there is any injury to the car or scooter or bike or cycle, bicycle, any product, anything, and there are companies, both government companies, private companies make insurance. Okay, so if you are joining, if you are uh, insuring any of the products or if your life also, it's also part of the financial inclusion. Look at the uh, other one. Earlier, only the government employees, those who are working with the government can get pension. Pension means if somebody working for a company or a, for a government for a certain number of years, and making a small contribution regularly and at the end of the retirement or at the end of the work period, say retirement, and the government or a company will pay, uh, uh, start paying some small amount actually. That's called pension after retirement. And that was, that was used to get only for the government employees. But today, even those who work in the private sector, uh, those who are working regularly with one company or many companies, if you are making a small contribution on a regular basis, say for about for 15 years, 20 years, at the end of 20th year, or if you are attaining the age of 60, and you will get pension payments on a regular basis. So the becoming part of the pension holder, contributing to the pension, is also part of the financial inclusion. In this way, you are securing your life, and you are, you are also able to meet your basic needs. Okay, so the insurance, pension, having bank accounts, these are all are participating in the digital payment. Okay, these are all part of the financial inclusion. Why this word called inclusion? That is because 
previously only a small section of people used to participate in these activities. For example, only those who are having a um, bank balance of say 10,000 rupees only, they can have a check payment. They can have a checkbooks, they can make payments. And, but now things have changed. Okay. And uh, unless you have a minimum bank account, minimum bank balance, and you can have the bank account. But today things, even without any bank balance also, you can have bank account. So things have been changing now. So that is because people are expected to participate in the financial services available in the country. Uh, but so, sir, here I have one query. If I'm not wrong, uh, in the current scenario as well, some private banks do offer uh, this clause that you need to have some minimum balance, then only you can open the account. Uh, no, that is not true. Hmm. There are some, uh, like the banks are encouraged hmm. to have, um, see there are facilities available. Hmm. For example, if you are having a um, uh, minimum 10,000 rupees bank balance, hmm. you have some facilities. Okay. So okay. if you want to avail all the facilities the bank provides, hmm then you have to have a minimum balance, say 10,000 rupees. Otherwise, okay. um, most of the government banks and most private banks are also expected to provide. Suppose, for example, if you are working with a company, hmm. a private company or five, and you are drawing a salary about say 3,000, 5,000 rupees a month. Hmm. And if you tell the bank that I have a, um, I'm working in a company, working with a company, I'm having a regular income, hmm. then they will allow you to have a zero balance account also. Okay. So provide that you assure that you are mm -hmm. regularly contributing your uh, your savings to the bank. That's the reason. That's the reason why this minimum balance, balance. concept come into being. Okay. For example, if you are if I put it in simple words, mm -hmm. if you are a salaried person, whether you are working in a private sector, or government sector, mm -hmm. banks will use zero balance uh, zero balance account actually. Okay. Okay, that's the idea. So so by now you must by, <coughs> by examples that I gave you, you know what is meant by financial inclusion. This means ensuring access to the financial services in a timely manner adequately with a reasonable cost okay, okay that's what that's what uh, the concept of financial inclusion look at the screen these are the official definitions available uh, for the term called financial inclusion this means in simple terms access to a wide range of financial services at a reasonable cost okay that's called financial inclusion okay so in today's session, apart from this understanding about financial inclusion, mm. we'll also come to know some data, the evidences, what is happening in the area of financial inclusion. Mm. Look at the screen. I told you that, uh, let me repeat again, access to ensure financial services to people is called financial inclusion. Okay, there are different ways of financial inclusion happens here. For example, we all know that rich people, well of people, people with assets, they go to bank and then they are able to get credit. Okay, they can borrow for um, some time, they can borrow for establish their inter like enterprises and so on. But such credit facilities are not available in the past. But today, thanks to many initiatives by the voluntary organizations, by the government of India, you find that many people are coming to bank, they are able to access. You are going to read class uh, like uh, class 10, chapter 3, uh, chapter money and credit, in which you are going to dis discuss more about how these self-help groups are facilitating people to access banks without collateral. Okay, so you'll, I'm not going to discuss much on that area. You are going to read in your textbook. But let me introduce you some ideas. Okay, look at this uh, pie chart. This is called a pie chart. And in this pie chart, in 2012, what was happening there? I'm seeing here. Uh, Mukta, can you tell me who are the major um, people? Uh, see, this, this is in the rural India. Hmm. Out of 100 houses, 100 families, how many families are able to access credit, borrow money hmm. from which sources? The sources means it may be commercial hmm. bank, hmm. cooperative societies, money lenders, landlords, relatives, traders, others, and so on. Who are the major source of credit? In the rural so area in 2012. The pie chart, it's clearly shown that commercial banks and the cooperative societies have an equal share where they are sharing their contributions. The maximum who, yeah. who are the maximum uh, uh, supplier? Money the, lenders. Money, money lenders. lenders. So if you look at even 10 years yeah. before, the yeah. money lenders were the major source of credit yeah. for the rural India. Rural people they could not get. Yes. And commercial banks have uh, to, uh, some existence, they are there. And sir, uh, before we move forward, as we see that money lenders have the major 
share in that. So what could be the reason in that? That was because at that time money lenders were, uh, they are not asking for any collateral. Okay. They are not asking for any documentation. Okay. They are not asking for what is your source of income. Okay. So the people are able to go and if they want money, okay, you come after one week. Okay. But, and within one week, they arrange money. But if you look at the problem with the money lender is that they mm. charge huge interest. rate of interest. Yes. You have yes. to pay huge. Suppose you borrow some thousand rupees today. Mm -hmm. And if you want to return this thousand rupees after say about... Um, uh, one month, yeah. you have to pay 100 rupees extra, 10%. Hmm. Okay. And sometimes it is also very higher. Hmm. And even money lenders are there also there in the urban areas also. So the money lenders charge very, very high rate. But so still uh, people opt for money lenders? Look at the data. So if you look at the 2012, hmm. this was a scenario. Hmm. And uh, one of the, whereas hmm. if you go to banks, if you are able to access bank, if you are able to convince the bank that I am doing a business, hmm. please lend me money. If you are buying, see if you are borrowing say 1000 rupees, at the end of one month, you have to pay not 100 rupees, you have to pay only 100, like 14 rupees or 12 rupees only. So the rate of interest is very, very low. The additional payment that you have to make mm -hmm. for borrowing money from the bank mm -hmm. is very less. Same case with the cooperative societies. Mm -hmm. In 2019, if you look at the chart, I am showing the latest data. Mm -hmm. uh, this data is available from the something report called All India. Um, Debt and Investment Survey, 2019. So this is uh, this survey is conducted by the Government of India, okay. National Statistical Office, Ministry of Statistics mm -hmm. and Program Implementation. So it has come out with a report. It's available in the internet also. You can download easily. Look at now. Tell me, you who are the major money lenders today? Who are the major um, lenders from where rural people are accessing credit now? So the commercial banks have made a like double jump. So if yeah. you look at in the last 10 years, you will mm -hmm. find the commercial banks have mm -hmm. succeeded yes. in going to the people in the rural area, mm -hmm. lending them mm -hmm. because rural people are, most of them are working in the farmers, mm -hmm. many of them are low income earners. So the commercial banks have become the bar dominant source of credit for the rural India. That's the major change took place in the yes, area. Yes. This means the we are also achieving, trying to achieve the financial inclusion in India. Yeah. As so that could be the sign of that we have that's achieved. One sim yeah. Yeah. That's one, one symptom of um, mm -hmm. uh, financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. That means more and more people are now going to the banks, yes. borrow from the banks, mm -hmm. so that their uh, rate of interest is very less. They are dependent on the money lenders is very less. Okay. So uh, in this way, uh, in the last 10-15 years, the dependence on the banks have increased tremendously. And in the case of cooperative banks and societies, it has come down to 10% only. Okay. And then friends and relatives, if you look at it, it is 7%. Mm -hmm. And landlords, there is no change. Money lenders, earlier it was about 33%, now it is 23%. Mm -hmm. okay. So it has come down. If you look at, look at the other, uh, let us look at the period, what has happened in the, during the 20 years time, 2003 to 2002 to there is a uh, error in the uh, table in mm. it should be 2002 uh, so please correct yourself mm. uh, in the screen in 2002 if you look at the way the uh, commercial banks it was 27 percent so in 2019 it has increased to 51 percent okay when you are presenting the data the pie charts are easily uh, explainable mm. you can see things very clearly mm compared to table. Yes. So whenever you are trying to answer some questions with regard to any data evidences, try to bring out, like trying to present in the form of pie charts. Learn to draw pie charts in the mathematics class and use it in your economics class. That's one of the best strategy to appeal, a better way of answering questions with regard to data. Okay. So I'm showing here in the uh, screen what has changed, like um, the source of uh, the money lenders dependence has come down during the last, say, 17 years. Okay. Let me go to another... <coughs> This is another uh, kind of chart called line graph. In the line graph, you are seeing the change over the period of, say, about 50 years. Mm -hmm. Almost 1951 to 2019, how many years? Almost More 70 years. years yeah. So what has happened in this source of like 20, 70 years, nearly 70 years? Mm -hmm. What is the change happened? When we say formal, mm -hmm. the banks, cooperative societies, societies. they are all government, they are called formal sources of credit. Informal means money lenders, friends and relatives, landlords, they are all called money lenders, like informal sources. Mm -hmm. So look at the what is happening to the informal sources. So it's, it has taken a dip. Yeah. From 70% in 1952, mm -hmm. it has it come has, down to sorry. say about, even in 1981 it has come down to 17%, mm -hmm. but again it shot up. Yes. 1981 to 2012 it has shot up mm -hmm. and then 2019 
it has come down again. Yes. Okay, so there, uh, the dependence on the informal sources has come down. Hmm. Whereas in case of formal sources, there is a, uh, a continuous rise from 1950 to 1980 hmm. and small decline over the period of 1919 to 2012. And then from like 2002 onwards, again started rising, 2009. From 1991 onwards, you can see the line going up actually. So our dependency on the formal sources of credit in the rural area has increased. Okay. So when you are uh, analyzing the data in 50 years time, you can use variety of visuals. So line graph is the best way to present the data huh? with regard to uh, any, any data with regard to like here it is financial inclusion. Look at the um, uh, cash loans with regard, I am now telling you, you may be knowing that okay, uh, you are talking about the whole uh, rural India, urban India. What is happening to the families, households? What is happening to the households? I am giving you some four kind of households. Look at the screen. Poor households, the people who does not have any asset. Okay. And then households with some assets. Maybe they may be having own house or cycle or some small vehicles. And then some well-off households, those who are having lands and so on. And then rich households. The urban areas means like cities like Delhi and small towns where majority of the people are depending on non-agricultural activities. That's called urban area. Mm. So what is happening in the urban area? If you look at the formal sources in, 19, in 2012, poor people, dependency on formal loan, look at the first, second column. Mm. In the second column, only 15% people were able to go for banks. Okay. In 2019, it has increased to 46%. 46%. So poor people are also able to access yes. banks today. Banks. Okay, if you look at the same second column, third column, mm. the rich people, well off people, they are already depending on the formal sources. Mm. So for them, there is no major change. They are in the past also, they were depending on the banks and today also they are depending on the, the bank. And very surprising, you can also see informal sources. Mm. Poor households, earlier 85% were depending on the informal sources like money lenders, friends and relatives, mm. landlords and so on. Okay, and today, the dependency on the um, informal sources has come down. More than half a percent in the urban area, they are depending on the um, informal sources. So uh, this is what like happening in the urban area. So you have now know about rural area also, in urban area also, the people's dependency on the banks, people going to the bank, borrowing money from banks has increased. Okay, so if you look at the financial inclusion means not only having bank account, not only de uh, depositing in the bank, it is also about uh, getting money and borrowing from banks. Thus, that has to increase. Okay, let me go to the, um, this is very technical matter and though you are a student and I am um, just familiarizing you about this index because when you are going to higher classes and uh, you are going to uh, learn more about this financial inclusion index. Okay, if you look at all these index having bank account, depositing money, borrowing from um, banks and uh, um, having an insurance and uh, contributing to the pension scheme. If more and more people uh, participate in these financial activities, then the financial inclusion index will show a higher value. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are three dimensions uh, to financial inclusion index. Uh, this index right now, the value is about 53.9. Look at the last row I am mentioning here, mm -hmm. FI, uh, financial, um, index FI index mm -hmm. increased. Mm -hmm. So this index has been developed by the Reserve Bank of India very recently mm. um, by using uh, many, many indicators. Indicators means many statistics. For example, uh, how many bank branches are there for every uh, lakh population, how many bank accounts are there, eh? and how many people are have borrowing money from a rural area, how many people are having pensions, how many people are uh, using the mobile for um, digital payments and so on. So there are many indicators that, are that were used in the construction of financial inclusion index. Okay, So this index shows that uh, from 0 to 100. If the index is showing 100, that means the whole nation, whole country is having financial inclusion. inclusion. That means you, whether you are a poor or a rich person or a middle class or if you are educated or uneducated, or if you are a woman or a man, poor you may be, if you are able to, uh, if the country is having financial inclusion index is 100 means, all of you are able to participate in the financial, uh, access to the financial services in the country. Okay. Look at the, um, now uh, you understood the idea of um, what is financial inclusion. Financial inclusion means ensuring 
all the financial services in the country. That means you may be uh, having the power to open bank account. You may be having the uh, having the um, what do you call provision to have pension, whether you are working in the private sector or in the public sector. You should have the pension scheme. Okay, if you are able to contribute to the pension scheme and have the, the provisions to, for example, opening a provident fund account, or if you are getting um, insured, not only for your life, but also the goods that you are having in your house, for example, television, fridge, your cycle, your house, or, uh, or your business, if you are owning a small business activity, if that activity is also insured, if you are able to insure, because this is one of the major issues in India, that insurance penetration is very, very low in the country. When compared with countries like Brazil, or countries like, say, uh, other developed countries, insurance penetration is the low, one of the lowest in the uh, world, actually. So the financial in inclusion index also includes the insurance penetration. If more and more people are insuring themselves about their life, about their health also, then this means your financial inclusion index will show a higher value. That means people in the country are able to participate in the financial activities of the country. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Srinivasan, sir. And I hope our today's session, your knowledge and your time must have extended, expanded the understanding of all our viewers and learners about the financial inclusion. Thank you so much, sir, once again for having, uh, for being with us in the studio and imparting such knowledge, though it was a very short interval of time, but it was indeed very informative information. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank all our learners, all our viewers as well who were connected with us throughout this session. I would like to say don't go anywhere. Stay connected to PMA with your channel and CRT official. We will be back with another session of maths. Namaskar.